Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 3rd, 2020 um, meeting of the Chapaqua Central School District Board of Education. The board has been in executive session since 532, discussing um, litigation, seeking advice of counsel, and discussing the employment of particular persons. Um, can I get a motion to reopen the public meeting at 737? Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. We can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Colin McCall. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start with the President's report tonight. Um, it would be very difficult to begin our meeting this evening without acknowledging that our community is grieving the loss of one of our students and that a family in our town has suffered a terrible tragedy. Um, I know that our collective hearts and minds and prayers are with this family, and I know that everyone in this room, in this district, in this community are here to provide any and all support and assistance that might be helpful throughout this very difficult and challenging time. I also wanted to acknowledge tonight that one of our board members, Vicki Tipp, is not with us tonight. Vicki has given me permission to share that her father is very ill and she is out of town with her father and her family at this time, which is where she should be. But she did want to apologize for not being here and I know that our thoughts are with Vicki and her family as well tonight. Um, I just want to mention a few upcoming events. Uh, we do have a very busy weekend here. We have two musical performances this weekend at Bell Middle School's production of The Sound of Music will be performed Friday and Saturday at Seven Bridges Middle School. And Greeley's senior musical uh, production of High School Musical is also this weekend. There are performances on Thursday, Friday, and two shows on Saturday. The senior musical is an almost 50-year tradition at Greeley with profits being donated to the Horace Greeley Scholarship Fund to help Greeley grads with college tuition grants. <coughs> so um, we have two musical performances, but in the spirit of high school musical and basketball and getting your head in the game, we also have a really big basketball game on Friday evening. Uh, the Greeley varsity basketball team will be playing their semifinal sectional game against New Rochelle. That will be at the county center at 6 p.m. And I just want to say that Friday night's win here um, against Ketchum was not only a great victory, but a really especially great display of school spirit. And I want to thank the administration for putting in extra bleachers. It was a packed house, and I think everyone that was there really, really had a special time and saw what a great spirited community we have here. So um, I know Christine, so if you want to see musicals, sports, etc., all here this weekend. Um, and that's it for me. I'll let Christine go ahead with the superintendent's report. So I just, um, before we present the budget, I just wanted to um, extend my gratitude to our community for helping support us um, these past few days, our PTA, our families, the faculty, the staff, um, the regional crisis team um, all mobilized um, and, and really allowed us to do work that we needed to um, with our students. And obviously we're very, um, we feel very sorry for um, the tragedy that um, has impacted one of our families and we'll continue to do our very best here to support our entire community. Uh, moving forward, but I did want to extend my personal gratitude for the outpouring of uh, support that we've received um, from all of our families um, since Sunday. So I, I do want to thank you, thank you for that. And I also, um, we have rescheduled the Bell presentation for March 18th, so they won't be presenting tonight, understandably. Um, so we thank our, our students and our teachers for uh, being flexible and, and allowing us to move their presentation to a later date. Um, so before, uh, I just, so I, uh, Jane had shared our, our musicals, so um, there are a couple things that I just want to talk about um, before I go into the slides. So the first, as I know on the, uh, on the news today, there's been a, uh, a lot of, um, of uh, reports about the coronavirus. So Adam and I actually had an opportunity to talk with the Commissioner of Health. Um, just so we could be sure, we have done a lot of internal work around supporting um, our, our nursing staff and our administrators on how we would be responding um, to uh, any concerns related to the, the coronavirus. Um, and we've had a lot of conversations with our physician, and I've, always, I've sent this all out in the past 
um, to our community. We've also up, um, um, escalated our cleaning procedures as well. But today on the, on the call, we just wanted to the verify a couple um, of our own practices and then talk about a few what ifs. So um, basically for our um, families, I just wanted to share that um, we would be enacting a response if there was a, 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 an individual with a confirmed case of the co coronavirus who would have interacted with our students. And then that would trigger an entire protocol that would be guided by the Department of Health. So until that happens, um, we'll proceed as, as usual unless um, the guidance um, changed from the Department of Health. But this was as recently as this afternoon. So um, based on their guidance, there's no reason for us to um, alter any of the procedures that we've been, um, that have been in place that have been, um, that has, have been shared with us um, from the Department of Health, the Center for Disease Control, the New York State Education Department, everything that we've been doing will continue to do. Um, unless we're advised other, otherwise, but I just wanted to share with you that we have done our, our due diligence by, by um, having um, an additional conversation with the Commissioner of Health today, including our own physician. So I, I thought it was important to share that. All right, so um, next week, I just want to remind the community in conjunction with the PTA, we have a huge speaker coming to work with our faculty and our parents. Um, so we have a parent session scheduled <coughs> for um, March 11th with uh, Dr. Jean Tween, she's the, uh, the author of iGen. We're really excited to have her. And then uh, following her parent session, we also have um, a faculty opportunity um, for her to be speaking with our, uh, our staff, K through 12. And then we have our, our <coughs> superintendent conference day the following day. So Adam was gonna talk a little bit about what that day looked like. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna use the um, author visit as a springboard into the superintendent conference day, which is on the 13th. And we have a um, pretty diverse menu um, with some external experts and also some internal expertise. We have uh, nearly 100 um, faculty members that have stepped up to facilitate sessions and this is an exciting particularly exciting conference day because we have quite a few Greeley students that are going to participate as presenters um, with this theme of I teach I kids we're pretty proud of that graphic over to the right we, we came up with that ourselves um, and the idea here is to, to make sure that we know how to reach and teach this generation of kids really well um, this generation of students and so we've got a variety of ways for staff to engage and participate in professional development on that day um, and as we've done in the past we basically roll out um, a menu of choices for them to to feel like they can differentiate their own learning and pick the things that will have the greatest positive impact on their their teaching and learning um, so that's the, on the 13th which is exciting coming up right, so um, I thought we'd talk a little bit about the fellowships that are on the agenda tonight so um, as uh, the district is aware we've been having um, the reading teachers and now special education teachers um, participate in the Wilson Level 1 certification program, so that fellowship is recommended to continue. Um, I've been working with the Social Emotional Learning Fellows, and our, um, our target area is aligning the curriculum K through 12, which is a part of our strategic plan. Um, Tony is um, suggesting that we move forward with an equity fellowship program that's um, across the district to look um, and work on issues related to social justice and how we can cultivate that work within our student population. And then, Adam, did you want to speak about the last fellow? Yeah, the last one, uh, where the acronym is SHIFT21, Shaping the Future of Teaching. And this fellowship's really about um, kind of modern, modern teaching, contemporary teaching techniques, um, technology integration, the new flexible spaces that we have online, supporting the faculty in L building and the STEAM labs and the other work that we've done, the new GLCs at the elementary school. Um, so this is a lot of technology integration, flexible space, um, student-directed learning, personalized learning, making sure our, our teachers are you know, pushing that envelope of, of what we know of good instruction in the 21st century. John, did you want to talk a little bit about the, um, the building work that's on the agenda tonight? Yes, um, we have two proposals from KGND. Uh, the first one, what you see is the um, uh, West Orchard roofs. Um, the most urgent piece is the, 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 the roof of the gym. And uh, that is enough. It's going to be part of our proposal for the for the budget, uh, interfund transfer. We're going to talk about that that um, at another time. But right now we have a proposal for uh, K KG and D to oversee this project. So that is the first part. And the second uh, contract. Do you have a picture? Or? 
that's as good as it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the point. Okay. So <laughs> one, one is the roof, and the other one I just didn't recognize oh, that. Okay. Um, the other one <laughs> is for for the uh, Greeley Gym. And what we are doing is that I think everyone knew about it. We have an emergency um, um, break, um, and you know the steam yeah. problem. We had to cut off the steam to to the uh, the gym. And right now it's all one system, so we want to break into two systems. So so the gym will be a totally independent system, so it will be easier to manage. And uh, so so for, so for the future. So we already had the first part. Um, they already designed the first part. Now is the second part, and so we have that contract up there for for your consideration. And then we also have the Seven Bridges ramp. So yes, and this is the Seven Bridges ramp. Um, we already have approval, and uh, so and it was designed by KGND already, and this is. I think probably some of you know this that uh, we don't really have a uh, ADA uh, compliant ramp or method to go to the upper field at Seven Bridges, and we will uh, we'll need that uh, for next year. Um, so we had this designed and we had this approved by SED already. So what in the contract uh, we we have a contract for approval is to build this ramp and this. We didn't bid this out, but we're using the general contractor that we already have a contract with, and they are using the, the rates that were approved by the board to come up with this quote. Okay, we also have two additional contracts I wanted to mention on the board agenda. The first, um, we have a cooperative agreement um, through BOCES, like a bidding process to secure the best price we can for our security firm, Summit Security, so that's on this, um, that's the long resolution on this agenda is, is authorizing BOCES to engage in this process for us um, so we can secure Summit's uh, security uh, force for next year. And the other is an annual contract we approve for our student assistance counselor at, at Greeley, so that's also on this agenda, Carolyn D'Agostino. She's been here many, many years. She's really important um, in, in, this, uh, in our high school and supporting our kids, particularly kids who are dealing with substance issues. Adam, did you want to talk about the PTA grant? Yeah, our PPS department and um, administration and faculty over at West Orchard have been piloting a, a sensory room for us, and the PTA at West Orchard has a generous donation um, for your consideration. It's 5.14 <laughs> for $4,800 for some um, supplies and materials for the sensory room. So you can see them. I lifted, listed them over there on the left side. That's just a, some of them. There are others. But uh, we're excited to um, see how students will use this room um, to, to be more successful at school and academically and then potentially scale it up into our other elementary schools. So thank you for the, okay. to the West Orchard PTA for that. All right, and that's it. That's, for our super, that's it for our superintendent's report. So thank you, everybody. So now we'll move into our uh, budget presentation. Here we okay, go. so here we go. So um, John and I are going to do our budget um, proposal for your consideration. This is a this is a process. So tonight is the overview, and then in the coming meetings we have our uh, components broken down by our um, mm. leaders of each of those particular departments, and then I'll come back at the end of that process and present the final budget for your consideration. So first of all, we always are using our board strategic questions to guide our process. Um, we have two questions. One is providing the most progressive and outstanding academic uh, program for our students, and the second is making sure we're being fiscally responsible in the development of that program. Um, we also have our five target areas within our strategic plan. We have um, our three areas that were identified as uh, needing improvement. So um, when we're developing our programs for next year, we're thinking about our assessment practices, um, curriculum alignment for academic program, curriculum alignments for social emotional learning, um, how we're using instructional technology to personalize learning in our classrooms, and then um, using our spaces to amplify our learning across the district. And then of course, um, for the foundational elements that are important um, to both our planning and our community at class size, um, the academic and extracurricular programs, maintaining them and expanding them, our infrastructure, and then of course we have to consider our contracts. Um, with the various uh, units that work in our district as we are uh, working through the budget process. And then we have our operating standards. They're pretty similar across the years. Continuing our tradition of excellence, um, providing a safe school environment, um, continuing to improve our instructional programs, being innovative, maximizing our efficiencies across the district and scheduling our, our personnel, 
um, hiring the highest quality of teachers and administrators, optimizing our communication structures, and maintaining our, our contractual class size ratios. Uh, we also um, consider our professional learning needs, um, making sure that we're maintaining teaming at the middle level, um, making sure we're um, uh, maintaining our core classes and um, our extracurricular program, um, allowing for extracurricular ex uh, extra um, cross-disciplinary experiences across our, uh, our instructional program, um, ensuring that our facilities continue to be safe and clean and well-maintained, and that um, our district and school offices are functioning efficiently. So these are the things that we all already know in terms of creating the, the budget, and we still have a few unknowns. So we know uh, what our projected en enrollment is. We know what our contractual obligations are for most of our units. We still have our administrative contract that's still in negotiations. We know what our ERS and TRS obligations are. We know our debt service. We know our assessment growth factor, our health insurance premiums, our equalization rates, our state aid calculations, our CPI, and our tax cap number. These are all things that we know um, now that we may not have known earlier in the year to help us craft what our budget um, looks like to date. Um, things that we still don't know are our state aid, our transportation costs, and we're still in the process of doing our annual reviews for special education. Obviously, our administrative contract is still outstanding. And then our assessed tax valuation, we're still waiting on this information. And hopefully, we'll have most of these resolved before we present the final budget um, for your consideration for adoption. John? Yes. So you can tell that we have updated this, um, this chart. Uh, based on the, the feedback. And so other than uh, the budget to budget increase, we also have added another bar corresponding to each year uh, with the tax uh, levy increases. So you will see that for this current year, uh, we're pro uh, proposing a budget with a 2.75% increase and the tax levy increase of 2.74%. Uh, and you can see the uh, last few years. And then this is our uh, per pupil cost. And when you look at the per pupil cost, we'll really just look at the straight line using the total budget divided by the total enrollment. And these are the numbers that we come up with. And uh, these are just uh, Putnam uh, and Westchester school districts. So these are all our neighboring districts. And we, there are 46 school districts, and this is the ranking. And uh, this is um, the top 11, I think. And we also we thought it was important we had done this last year is so we, we just feel like we need to show um, the community, you know, how, how well we do in terms of um, in comparison with our, with, our, um, with, our, with our other school communities across the state. So um, we, we find that there's a, the value that we place on the academic program here is reflected in our budgeting process, but also reflected in how well our students do on, on our state assessments and our national assessments. All right, so we wanted to go into the, um, the expenditures and the revenues. And I also want to share, I want to thank the board for sending us questions in advance, because we uh, work to incorporate that into this uh, budget presentation. But we'll continue to address them as we um, go through the budgeting process. So, so we uh, broken the, the 10 largest um, expenses into 10, 10 categories. Uh, obviously, there's a service industry, so you see the salaries and employee benefits, they are the largest pieces. And uh, they're, that correspond to about 73, 74% of our total budget. And here, you actually notice we, we put down the percentage increases. You see some very large uh, increases, for example, operations and maintenance and uh, the technology and other. So as, as we unfold going into the, the detailed explanation in the future um, presentations, we'll have very detailed ex explanation. And when, when I talk about a non-instructional budget, I'll also talk about the employee benefits, why, why it's going up by 4.1%. Hey, John, yes. I know in the past you've always given us a, a pie chart for this. Could you include a pie chart next time, please? Sure. It's easier for me to see than the numbers. Okay. And uh, this is um, by percentage. Um, you just do a side-by-side comp -side comparison of two years. Uh, so other, other than a few, uh, for example, operations and maintenance, you see a 0.6% uh, uh, change from 4.4 to 5%. Um, 
other than other than that, you, you can see the side by side two years comparison. That's that's what this chart is showing. And then the revenues. Um, we will also go into details. Um, I think on the 25th to talk about the revenues. At that time, we're talk, talking details. Uh, for example, why the tax revenue is going up by 430,000. Uh, there's a reason for that because we're getting partial of that 1% uh, sales tax increase uh, from from the uh, the county, and uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that uh, later. And this is also the side by side comparison uh, from from uh, this year to next year. And this is the tax cap uh, calculations. So if you look at the tax cap, the bottom is $3.7 million. We can go up to $3.7 million. Um, can you go back two slides, sorry. Okay, so we are only going up to 2.74%. Uh, Christine, can you show us the very top? Uh, no, uh, yes. Oh, uh, if you look at the very top, right far now. right, this one, 2.7%. Four percent. So this is the number that is um, going to be against the tax cap. If this is over the tax cap, then we need to ask for a super majority vote from the voters. But you can see that we are uh, proposing a tax levy increase of 2.74 rather than 3.38 percent, which uh, we are allowed to go up to. So we are actually leaving, um, I think, 600, 700 thousand dollars. Um, not being used because we, you know, our commitment to the community is always that we ask for what we need, and uh, we really look at our budget and uh, what our needs and what we what we think is good for the education. And this is the uh, proposal that uh, superintendent is putting forward. So this is the tax cap calculations, and then um, you know this is just a rehash of uh, when we put forward a 42.5 million dollar bond. Uh, this is the commitment that we made to the uh, community that there will be no uh, tax levy increase uh, because of the bond. And uh, these are the things that we talked about. And these are the uh, enrollment projections. Uh, we're going forward, um, you know, several years. And you can see we're going to details by, by level, uh, elementary school, middle school, and high school. And I just want to mention before we start talking about this is that um, we checked with the planning board and uh, the only development that is going to come on board more than likely for this uh, coming year is probably going to be in the spring is the conifer uh, development. Uh, all the other uh, developments will not be in this budget. So we do have the conif conifer projections in this, uh, in this budget. So when I, do they expect the property on 117 to start to? Um, I think next yeah. year. Which, which one? The King Street? The Whispering Pines one. <coughs> yeah, the, yeah, across from Walgreens or like Old Stone. They've been putting up a. Oh, that one. I don't think. I, I don't know. It, but. It looks closer to com yeah. I know, I know the other have the third level. That there's no impact for next year. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. How many problems? Because because when. No, no, eight. 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 That's what I've heard. That how how many heard. units? <coughs> eight. I've heard eight. Well, the eight units will not have that much impact. We'll could, we'll find out. The, we'll ask if we can find out the complete projected. Pol but but you know, with eight eight units, you know, I, I think it'll be minimal. And uh, also, when you really think about it, we have thirteen grades. When you spread it out, it's not going to be projected completion for the. Well, I okay. can find out. Yeah, we'll but find out. We'll find out. Okay, so I did, I see people running things down. We're going to put this on the on the website tomorrow. So you, you don't, if you certainly can write things down, but we'll. We'll have it up there for our, our community. We usually post everything after the meeting. So, um, so these are our class size projections um, based on our, our actual numbers. Um, so you'll see that um, our kindergarten classes are um, traditionally smaller than our other classes. Um, we are under the contractual limit for our faculty um, in all cases. And we don't have any of our elementary classes um, exceeding 23 students. Um, these are our numbers at the middle level. 
our sections reflect the number of students um, that we have at each grade level to help support their instructional program. Um, so you can see the projections for both Bell and Seven Bridges next year. And the principals have been um, hiring and planning around these projections moving forward. And then these are our projections at the high school level for 2021. Right, so um, while we'll be talking about these in much more detail <clears throat> in our upcoming um, budget presentations, I do want to highlight um, the additions that you'll see as our uh, leadership team presents the components of the budget. First, we are recommending, we already have one teacher assigned at the middle, shared between the two middle schools to provide STEAM enrichment and AIS instruction. We're proposing we increase that by one position. So now we have one person assigned to Bell and one person assigned to Seven Bridges for math, AIS, and STEAM enrichment. You'll see that we also included a position in there that we currently have in operation because we added this position after the budget process last year. Um, we are going to be recommending to you that we increase the administrative team at the high school by one assistant principal, and we'll talk, it, we'll talk with you a little bit about why that's um, an important recommendation for us. Uh, we also had to add the part-time PE assistant athletic director in the budget because we added this position to the district after the budget process was completed. We also added the student resource officer to the, to, the, to the district after the budget process was completed. So that's why these two positions are in um, the additional column, even though we have them currently. And then finally, um, based on our previous presentation to the board, we were adding three psychologists um, to our staff to support the CSE process um, in the district. So you'll see here where we're going to offset some of those costs by our reductions based on class size or specific needs or reorganization. But we'll, we'll talk more, much more about this, um, particularly during the curriculum and instruction presentation on the, on the 18th that Adam will be uh, providing with his, with, his, with his leadership team. Okay, so our summary. So we feel like um, the board respond, the, our budget responds to the board's strategic planning, um, strategic questions, and then our, our strategic plan meets our operating standards, um, make sure our kids are in safe and phys um, physically appropriate environments, um, and maintains the support that, that we have that we feel is important in the athletic department with our SRO. Um, it will address some of the concerns um, that we've been um, hearing out of our pupil personnel services department. Um, it also will help increase the administrative leadership capacity at the high school level. Um, we're adjusting our personnel based on our enrollment and the budget we're proposing to you is under the levy limit for our district. So just a recap, this is our proposed budget moving forward. Um, that we'll be talking about in the next month and a half until um, we um, have a final budget for your consideration in April. So here's the calendar. Um, so we've had um, the budget preview and then you have the overview of what the rec budget recommendation will look like. And then we have our component presentations on the 18th and the 25th. And mm -hmm. then on the 15th, I will uh, plan to present um, the budget for your consideration and at some point before the 15th we'll have our budget forms for our families. We still need to schedule that. We'll have um, what those dates will be at the 18th meeting. And then you'll see the um, corresponding um, presentations after that up and leading up until the budget vote. Oh, so we already have them on here. Yes, I'm sorry. Scheduled. <laughs> yeah, so they're March 26th at uh, 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. So that's when we'll have our PTA sponsored community forms. And then if people have budget comments, uh, I uh, suggest that you either come to a meeting and you can express that at public comment or you can email one of us or you can call John and I um, at any point and we'll take your feedback. 
under consideration and we'll share it with the larger board of education so and then just want to yeah. reiterate that this 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 presentation will be on the website and then also the draft budget line by line budget will be on the website as well tomorrow Will it be like? Will it be like a quick link on the um, district page? Like I know sometimes, you know, we just try and we can put do that. it up front so yes. that up, people we can have put to it up front, and then we also have in the body okay. under the budget. Yes. Yeah, we have a, a specific budget based on feedback we received from the committee member right. last year. Kind of it. So, um, are there any questions or um, that we can answer for you right now? Or, um, based on what we presented or um, a lot of the detail of the why behind um, the overview will be presented in the in the coming two weeks but we can certainly take questions now from the board if there's any related to what we just presented I think it's a fair overview I don't see some detail a couple of questions but not now yeah I'm going to wait to like go through it thoroughly when we see the component pieces yeah. but this looks so great okay okay all right, so John, thank you. can you, thank you. And I just want to thank uh, John and of course um, the business office for all their work in preparing um, the budget every year. It's tremendous. Yeah. I know you all start very early and you're always on top of everything and it, it is much appreciated by all of us because it, it makes it a very easy process for us to go through as well. So thank you. Thank you. Also is really supported by all the administrative staff yeah. too, so. Okay, so I, I wanted to talk um, about um, the Zotter property subdivision and I and based on um, some previous meetings that we've had um, I want to share with you the financials associated with the with the subdivision um, and I also want to share with the community how we're going to move forward based on the information I'm going to share with you today okay so um, as you know we have um, we acquired the Zotter property, and I've already shared this previously back in like 1973. And so about 20, 20 or so acres. And um, I, I don't want to make an assumption about why the property was acquired, but there was a talk about when we were building um, or adding a school, should it be in this location? And this is not what was selected for Seven Bridges Middle School, so we had this excess land. Um, so back in like 2010, the Board of Education decided to initiate a process to begin to sell that land. And so that's been a long process for this Board of Education and for the district. And the decision was made to um, sell that property in a way that it would, it would be um, subdivided. And through that decision, came a, became, um, there became a process to um, have that subdivision approved by the town planning board. So in order to have that subdivision approved, there was a team of, um, of specialists brought in to assist with all of the requirements necessary for town board approval. So um, these are the six team members, and I'm going to talk about what each of them does, but I'm going to use two different categories to do that. All right, but before I do, I want to talk a little bit about what our process is um, for purchasing and entering into contracts with different um, service providers. So for the purposes of this presentation, we have two different categories of, of um, contracts. So we have um, public works contracts, and the, and, and the district can engage in contracts with um, entities up to $35,000. And then when, once you hit $35,000, we have a process that we need to follow. And for our professional services contracts, we can engage in agreements up to $40,000, and then once you hit $40,000, there's a process we need to follow, right? And so if um, we have hit the $35,000 threshold, we have to do some um, advertising and some bidding. But once we hit $40,000, we have to do a RFP, which is a request for proposal, which is advertising in the newspaper, submitting um, proposals to the, to the 
to the district, and then ultimately the Board of Education approving those, those proposals based on any type of work that would exceed that um, threshold for professional services. So now I'm gonna explain why I just shared that information. All right, so when we, I'm, I'm gonna talk about expenditures related to the subdivision in two categories. The first category are expenditures that were com, um, compliant with the policies and regulations that I just described. So we have three um, contractors that we used their services and they were in line with our policies and procedures. And those three <coughs> contractors um, were associated with test pit analysis on the property, legal services related to um, advice regarding the application and the surveyor. So we issued purchase orders. I also put the years up there that um, these three organizations had done their work and the amount of money that we spent. All this was um, expended appropriately. And then we had um, three different companies where initially the approval process was correct, but we exceeded the authority approved by the board and spent more money that was initially approved. So um, J.D. Barrett Landscaping Architect is, they are like the, the over, they provide oversight for the project. So the Board of Education approved three separate contracts for them, but the, the, the amount approved totaled by the board totaled $90,000, but the district spent about $200,000 on their services. Campbell Engineering, they had to do some engineering related to like the water main and septic and the roadway. They had an RFP because initially their work exceeded $45,000. So the Board of Education, and they worked over multiple years, and so the board approved that they could do $90,000 worth of work. But their work associated with this project um, was about $200,000 as well. So they exceeded the amount that was initially approved by the board through the RFP process. And then Leggett um, Engineering did our stormwater engineering, and they actually merged with that WSP company during this process, because remember, it was over many years. So collectively, through an RFP, those two companies, which are now one company, were approved to do work up to $78,000. And they, ex and so you can see it's lumped into two because they wound up merging, but they exceeded the $78,000 allotment by $23,000, uh, about $23,000. So, so let me just go to the next slide. So the board authorized um, a certain amount of money for the district to spend in relation to um, the requirements of the town board approval process. And the district exceeded that amount by about $256,000. And we found this out because someone had asked to look at our contracts. And then through that, through that look, we discovered that this was an issue. So someone had asked to ask, asked us to send them their contracts and then we began to look at our contracts and we realized we exceeded the amount and that's how we came to um, find out that there was a problem. So I do wanna say, before I talk a little bit about our process here, that everything that was done in relation to the money spent was necessary for the town planning board approvals for the subdivision and it was all verified. So all the work was done and it needed to be done it's the process by which it was done that's problematic. So I, I do want to share the process um, of how things are approved. So what typically, we have, a, we have a contract, right, or an RFP approved by the board when it's applicable, because the board doesn't approve all our contracts. But there are certain situations where you would approve a contract or an RFP, right? So the board approves the, um, the contract or RFP. A purchase order is opened, 
The work's done, an invoice is submitted, and it's verified that the work is done. A warrant is created, and the paperwork goes to the uh, claims auditor for approval. Now, the claims auditor works for the board, not for the district. So I don't supervise the claims auditor. I supervise the business office, right? So then the claims auditor, auditor um, is supposed to take is supposed to review all the documents and then sign the warrant um, to verify that it meets all of our criteria for approval. Um, and once the claims auditor does a double check to make sure everything's correct, they send that assigned warrant to accounts payable down in the business office and they release the check to pay for the services that's signed by our treasurer. So obviously this process um, did not work, right? So we, so this is what we've done to date. So um, John and I met with our claims auditor and our attorney to review our policies and responsibilities and to revise our claim auditor procedures. Like in, as soon as we found out there was a problem, right? And then we conducted an internal review of our professional contracts, because that's what we're talking about here that's problematic for last year and for this year, and, we, and uh, we reported that to the Board of Education to see if this was an anomaly or if we had a pattern. And based on that review, it appears to us that this is an anomaly. Um, but to be absolutely certainly, certain, um, the Board authorized at our last meeting that we'd have an independent forensic audit with legal oversight, um, come in and do an audit of our of our of our purchasing, and they'll be sharing those their recommendations and their findings with the board, and then we'll make revisions as recommended um, to our policies and our practices as as appropriate. But also, we have work that's still left to be done for town board approval for the subdivision. So um, uh, we had. Uh, put our RFP process together and advertise those for the remaining work so that the board can um, decide if they want to authorize moving forward the remainder of the work that needs to be completed for final planning board approval for the subdivisions. Right, so that is um, where we are in terms of the financial update for the outer properties. So are there questions about what um, I presented? that John and I can answer for you. Uh, I, have of, I have a lot of questions. I want to see the forensic audit bill first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, my question was going to be, what time frame do you expect the forensic audit to be completed and presented? So the forensic audit is <laughs> um, commencing immediately. It, it, um, it usually takes multiple days to engage in this work, and then... Um, it takes a longer period of time to analyze the findings and present them. So I'll have a better idea on the 18th after I speak, after the forensic auditor is on site um, as to how long that process will take for her um, to be able to present to you her findings. So I can share that on the yeah, 18th. Any idea like magnitude, week, month, year? Um, usually when we have an audit, they're on site sometimes for from two weeks or a little bit longer than that. Okay. So let me get a scope from her of how she feels, or a timeline from her of, of this work. But it, it's going to be pretty thorough. Right. To what time frame are you having her look at the entire length of this project, or just the past two years? So for, I can take some feedback from you on that, but she'll look at the entire project. But I think we'll want her to go beyond that scope mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, to look at general procedures mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So she'll audit the entire project, right. but I also think we need to go beyond that um, within reason because there's a lot of documents here. So um, we may have her consider repeating some of the process that we did in our internal review. Okay. How do you want to receive feedback from us on that? You can send me an email. Okay. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or comments? I'll reserve until we see the other audit. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. I know that the, the not is coming and we'll probably have questions mm -hmm. and we'll ask at that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Okay, we are moving on to committee reports. Um, does anyone have anything to report? Would you like to back up? Oh, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I know we don't have anything communications committee. Um, was there a How else are we supposed to meet on Thursday, though, because of Vicki's father? Okay. Meet? And facilities we met right before the break, so I'm sure we're going to meet again. Okay. We have, we have okay. Thank, Thank you, you, David. So, no, no committee reports, I don't know. Right. Anything else? Okay. Um, we will move on to public comment. Uh, we welcome public comments, and uh, we ask to be respectful of each other's time to limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, as I'm sure you all know, board members can be contacted by phone or email. And after the public comment period, board members may have a discussion <coughs> amongst themselves regarding comments presented. So <coughs> come on up and state your name so we have it. Laura Townsend, um, I have three comments, I think. Mm -hmm. First being, um, with the challenging past couple of days, it's come to more to light than ever how caring our teachers and principals and upper administration are, and I just would like to express a gratitude as a parent and as the PTA president for the level of care that our kids get every day, but especially in times of crisis. Um, second thing is while we celebrate all the good things like our athletics, and um, I want to say that our swim team is going to states yeah. this week, Kelly. This week. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing to celebrate. Um, and finally, in the items proposed, I'm particularly interested in item 5.5 regarding the um, uh, science research consultant. So I'm hoping you can speak a little bit about that during your discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Anyone else? So Michael Blueglass is a um, consultant, um, but he's also uh, very well known in the region for his work with science research in a nearby district. He's a coordinator at Yorktown High School right now. He's retiring at the end of the school year, and he's available to do um, some, cons some consulting. Um, Yorktown has been a powerhouse um, in science research, and he has a tremendous reputation in the region. Um, works really on a national scale with science research. research. He's been doing it for a long time. So our faculty here at Greeley um, reached out to the curriculum office to ask if we could uh, perhaps secure his services as a um, consultant professional developer um, to support our science research program. Last year, you may remember, the board approved the addition of a director of science research. So we've been really trying to um, do some work on science research so more kids have access and we you know, lift the level of the experience that the kids, kids have in that science research program. So um, we have uh, secured Michael Blue Glasses, um, potentially secured Michael Blue Glasses um, support to help the teachers like really, really refine, make some adjustments to that program. Um, uh, Andrew Corsilia and I uh, interviewed him um, as part of this process and we were very impressed um, with you know what he had to say and some suggestions that he had already based on what he knew about our program and um, even interacting with our teachers and kids at some of the local competitions. So he knew our program pretty well and he knew our, our teachers very well and had some good things to say just in the interview that we had. So we really think he will be a great help and asset to us as a district and it's nice that he's um, available to be able to provide that service. Great. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, moving on to item three, approvals and ratifications. Um, I'd like to take 3.1 and 3.2 together. Uh, be resolved that the Board of Education accepts the minutes of the February 12th, 2020 board meeting and the minutes of the February 24th, 2020 special board meeting. Can I have a motion for items 3.1 and 3.2? I move that we accept the minutes um, in 3.1 and 3.2. I second. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I okay. recommend 4.1 instructional as presented. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for 4.1. Second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I recommend 4.2 non instructional as presented. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for item 4.2. I'll, I'll second. Oops. Okay, I'll second. Any questions? Comments? 
All in favor? Right. Item five, recommended action. This is our consent agenda, pursuant to which the board um, makes more effective use of its time by um, adopting a single motion to cover relatively routine matters, many of which have been discussed beforehand, ones that we thought you would need more information on. Um, we would like to say, though, that um, any item can be taken out of the consent agenda so that any board member can ask questions and um, uh, be heard on any issue. It's recommended that the Board of Education approve the following consent agenda as submitted by the superintendent. Can I have a motion to approve items 5.1 through so I'm get my numbers straight here. 5.22. Thank you. My pages are stuck together like this. Uh, 5.22. I will move to uh, adopt the consent agenda. Can I have a second? Second. Any questions, discussion? I'd like to take 5.2 off and, and, and discuss that separately. Okay. Other than that, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. 5.2. Okay, so um, can I have a motion to <coughs> take 5.2 off? Or we think you did. I, I you think did we, move, I, I like say to move it? Yeah. Just take, do we have to move to take it off? Do you want to table the item? No, I want to Or just to take it off separately. separately. So I'd like to amend your proposal that we accept the uh, consent agenda. Okay, so let's. Except 5.2. Okay, so let's, um, can we. Remove to. Have a consent agenda. Yes, can we remove 5.2 and make a motion to approve items 5.1 and items 5.3 through 5.22? I will, I will second that. You move that, I will second that. Okay. Are you going to bring 5.2 back up? Yes. yes. Motion? Mm -hmm. So perhaps you should have your discussion and then. Well, well can we move? Discussion. I'm wondering, right, we will have the discussion, but then. You wanted to pull it out separately, okay. so I don't know if we should move it separately. Let me just, do we want to have or a separate vote on 5.2 or we want to make sure we discuss 5.2? Because you can motion the consent agenda and then have a discussion, but if you want to, if okay, you want so that vote Okay, so let's discuss 5.2 okay. and then we can I move to five, approve all of it together. I so think 5.2 should be read. Okay. Huh. That's, oh, okay. Okay. oh, okay. I didn't understand that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you are you motioned and seconded, then you read We motioned and seconded as a comment. You'd like 5.2 to be read. So why, do, why don't so you can read, 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 it into the, read it into the record? Okay. Right? During the discussion. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's fine. Okay. So I'm happy to do that. I'm glad. Thank you for clarifying I all just of that. I think 5.2 is very important since yeah. we go through these very quickly. Uh-huh. Which is not a bad thing in all certain circumstances. No, absolutely. Say, this absolutely. This is very important the community. Okay. So. Um, I will read aloud item 5.2. Thank you, Warren. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Chappaqua Central School District, Westchester County, New York, hereby authorizes and directs the district clerk to give notice to the qualified voters of the school district of the annual public hearing on the budget and annual meeting, school district election, library election, and vote as follows. Notice of annual public hearing on budget, annual meeting, school district election, library election, and vote. Thank you. Okay, great. That's fine. So, um, any other comments, questions? Okay, so all in favor of the consent agenda as originally moved items 5.1 through 5.22. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you for that. Item 7, financials. Um, be it resolved that the Board of Education acknowledges receipt of the claims auditor report for January 2020. Uh, yeah, we. I think we um, need to amend that. I, yes, I actually read it as amended. Sorry, I should amend that. Um, be it resolved. <coughs> well, can I have a motion to amend? Can we move to amend it? Yes. Yep. I'd like to amend item 7.1 to read as follows. Can I have a motion to amend it and read it? Yeah. Be resolved that the Board of Education acknowledges receipt of the claims auditor report for January 2020. A second. Second. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so can we move all in favor of adopting item 7.1 as amended? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Item 8, Notice of Future Meetings. 
Our next meeting is Wednesday, March 18th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. We will be talking about the curriculum, technology, and special education budget presentations. And our following meeting after that is Wednesday, March 25th at 7.30 p.m. We will, we will discuss the athletic operations and maintenance, non-instructional revenue, tax rates, contingency budget presentations. Um, okay, that's a mouthful. And as we noted before, there will be budget presentations um, on the 26th, was it, did we say? Um, okay, can I have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting at 8.33? I move. Second. All in favor? Right. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you.